Chuck. What's up, Neil? We're, we're back at it. Ah, uh, must be time to explain. You, you, you're my, <laughs> you, you're my explainer guinea pig. That's it. I get to, I get to, I get to get the test case for all for, explanations. For all millions, you will see this on YouTube. That's right. Okay. So a couple of things. Uh, right. I want to talk about the sun. All right. Okay. Who's sun? <laughs> S U N the oh, right sun. On, right the on. day after which Sunday is named. Okay. Uh, did you know that? The, yeah, yeah. Sun <laughs> Sunday. I don't know. I mean, it, it only has the word in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sunday's named after the sun. The seven days of the week are named right. after the seven classical planets. Just uh -huh. so you know, and yeah. God's related to those planets. So Saturday, I guess, is named after whom? Uh, Saturn. Saturn. And Moon Day. Uh, the moon. I, I gave you a hint there. Because <laughs> <laughs> you called it Moon Day. The Moon Day. Um, yeah. So here we go. And the others, you have to go to the god equivalent that ruled the planet. And then you get the you can flesh out the seven classical planets, which were Mercury, Mercury. Venus, Mars, right. Jupiter, Saturn, the sun, and the moon. There you go. The That's seven cool. objects that would wander against the background stars. Mm -hmm. And the Greek word for wanderer is planetis. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the sun, what's interesting to me is our vocabulary to describe what's going on in the sky is pre-Copernican. So Copernicus, around 500 years ago, uh, wrote a book called De Revolutionibus, which was on the revolutions of the heavenly bodies. And he realize that maybe Earth is not in the center of all motion. He should have named that book, It's Not All About You. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it probably would have sold better, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the world's first psychiatrist. <laughs> it's not about you. It's not about you. And it's not your fault. <laughs> right. It's, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> Okay, so our vocabulary reflects Earth being in the center of the known universe. We don't say, what time does the sun come into position such that its upper limb becomes visible over the rotating horizon of Earth? No. We, we just ask... When sunrise. When is sunrise. When is exactly. sunrise. Exactly. So there's a certain simplicity to thinking that we are in the center of all things. But don't forget that that entire vocabulary predates the discovery and affirmation that the sun is in the center of that motion and not Earth. So I just want to say that. So okay. now, <clears throat> so we have the sun moving across the sky. So sunlight was generated in the center of the sun. We did a whole explainer video on how the sunlight gets out of the sun. And then it comes through the empty space, all right? gaps that distance in eight minutes and 20 seconds, then it moves through our atmosphere and then it reaches your eyeballs. Right. Okay. The light through the vacuum of space moves at the speed of light. When it goes through Earth's atmosphere, it is no longer moving at the speed of light. It slows down? It slows down. Okay. Okay. Anytime light slows down, coming at an angle into a medium, the path of light bends. The physics term for that is refract. Yeah. It refracts, much like a straw. Do people still use straws? No. No, yeah, they're paper straws now. Yeah. Well, now yeah. you have the spiral, th I remember those. I, I'm old enough to remember when all straws were paper and you couldn't drink milkshakes out of it because the, the oh, straw would collapse. All right. And then if you use a straw too long, the straw would get waterlogged and it would just be completely useless. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I have straw issues at the moment, but I'll get over them. All right. So if you put a straw in a half filled cup of water tilted, you'll see the the straw bends. The light bent on its way out of the liquid into the air of the straw. So that bending is no different physically from going from vacuum to air. Two different media of different densities. Okay, I say all of this because as the sun approaches the horizon to set, 
it's actually moving faster than you see it to be. Oh. So refraction is taking the sun lower than the actual position on the sky you think the sun is. Oh, that's, oh man, no, it's, I love it's crazy. That. So now watch, so watch, so watch. That's no, great. So watch. Yeah. So when the glowing sun is on the horizon, right. the sun has already set. Yes, that's amazing, I love it. I love this, it. So the, the atmosphere is actually taking the light and bending it in such a way that you are seeing a sunset that has really already happened. It, or it happened five minutes ago. Yeah. You, you oh. missed it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's okay. Cool. Yeah, oh, it's, that's, that's it, really cool. So what it means is if you had some super missile, okay, and you aimed it at the setting sun and it could get there instantly, it would just miss it. It would just fly off into space because that's not where the sun is. That's the image of the sun bent into a direct line of uh, for your line of sight. Oh, that's okay. Pretty... So, now, all right, so now watch. That's great. That's really great. But wait, there's more. <laughs> okay. And if I act now, <laughs> <laughs> you, you want two for one? I okay. can. I, right. <laughs> I get two for can one. I, ready? Can I just pay shipping and handling? <laughs> <laughs> Here's two for one. So now that's sunset. Okay. How about sunrise? Well, the same thing is happening. It's playing out on the other side of the sky. When you, okay, when you see the sun rise, the sun is still below the horizon and has not yet risen. Wow. Okay. Look at that. It's doing the same thing in reverse. So it's in taking reverse. the light, it's bending <clears throat> it, and you're seeing light that over the, over horizon. the horizon. And now you're seeing that light before the sun is actually there. Correct. So now, that's okay, so cool. So you're getting a few extra minutes of sunrise light and a few extra minutes of sunset light. Okay, so watch what happens. If you wait around for the equinox, which we glibly say, I will, and my colleagues and everyone who knows, will glibly say equal day and equal night. 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. If on that day, you look up in the tables what time the sun rises and what time the sun sets. It is not, it does not split the day into 12 and 12. Because of this extra five minutes on each side. So in fact, the equinoxes give you 10, about, it depends on what your latitude is, but about 10 minutes more sunlight than a pure 12 and 12 would splice it to be. So if you're one of these people who likes looking up these tables, you can you can wiki them or Google them. You look up the table, sunrise, sunset. If you want to find the day when you actually have 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness, it will not be on the equinoxes, even though I have told you we have equal day and equal night because it's too much to explain all the rest of this that I just did. So I'm going to leave it at that. And if you come to me later and say, but Dr. Tyson, I looked it up and it's not true, come into my office. Now we can explain the, and now I can give you the full explanation. Wow. That of, is phenomenal. Cause I'm so, not giving, I'm not coming out of the box, giving you that full explanation. Exactly. If right. you didn't know the 12 and 12 to begin with and right. the origin of the word and all the rest of that. That's great. Once you, once you come out of the box, then we'll give you the full explanation. And there, there you it go. Is. Right now you're on a need to know basis, bitch. <laughs> need to no. know. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. All edu as an educator, at all times, my audience is on a need to know basis. That's at a, all times. Yeah. So, so uh, let's let's do that experiment. You ready? I'll do it with you. Go ahead. Okay. So, Chuck, um, what path is Earth's orbit around the sun? What shape is that path? Uh, so it's a it's a round. <laughs> <laughs> Love that vocabulary, Chuck. It's around, man. It's around. No, it's it's an ellipse. It's an ellipse. A, it's, it's, it's an, an ellipse. ellipse. Okay. Had I told you it was a circle, would you have called me out on that? I would have because okay. I would say, I would say you, that we are we already had that model of the solar system. Okay, and, it's very and, good. Okay, right. so here's the thing: if you didn't know Earth moved at all then I'll probably start out that explanation saying, Earth goes in circles around the sun. What, the sun doesn't go around the Earth? All right, so, so, so that first foray 
I don't want to get too, it's not, you don't need to get complicated yet because you want to get to the basic ideas across, okay? So then we put, we go around a circle, and then we say, no, wait a minute, the circle's not, not working as we need. Oh, you know, because it's not actually a circle. It's an ellipse, okay? A slightly flattened circle, which is the answer you gave me. So Chuck, you're so happy with the, with the ellipse explanation. You're happy I'm, with that. I'm good with that. Okay. I'm good. That's because you're on a need to know basis. Oh, so you're saying that it's not an ellipse. It, Earth's actual orbit around the sun is not an ellipse. Oh, and, so and I ran out of time in this explainer video to tell you why. Oh, so now that I need to know, I can't know. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have to put that in another explainer video at another time. All right. That's okay? cool. Now, let me get back to the sunlight in the 12 hours a day and night. So okay. this refraction is just kind of a fun fact about the sun. Because you see it not where it is, but where the refraction of light puts allows it. you to right. see it. That's right. That's I love that though. That that's really cool because you're never really looking at what you're looking at. And and let's 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 finish it, which is not only is the sun not where you think it is on the sky for all the reasons I've given. There's other sort of ghosts of the sky that I think are worthy of just just putting out there. All right. Okay. When you right. look up at the stars. Yes. All right. Oh, by the way, they refract through these angles as well. Just saying. That, that makes sense. Light uh, is light. So. Light, is, light is light. In fact, right. when I'm at a telescope observing a star, their coordinates are the pure coordinates assuming Earth has no atmosphere. And the telescope knows the angle at which you are viewing the star relative to the horizon, and it calculates the refractive um, effects of Earth's atmosphere on that uh, starlight and it moves the telescope into that position, not the position of the star in the catalog. That's so cool, man. Because we, we got people who know how to do that. Just saying. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, I'm pretty sure you would need those people. <laughs> <laughs> we got just, good people. But, but not yeah. only that, those stars not only go through this refractive thing, but this is light that they emitted tens, hundreds, thousands, millions, and in some cases, billions of years ago. They're all just ghosts. So they may not even be there. You're seeing light from something that's not even there. This the ghosts from things that may or may not even exist. That is really, I mean, that's, I mean, I mean, I understand it completely. Yes, but it's really kind of eerie to think about and cool because like we, when you cut off a flashlight, you just, there's no way you can distinguish the light that last left the flashlight. You can't distinguish that because everything goes dark and you can't make that perception. But what you're saying is, here's this super brilliant, luminous thing in the sky, a star, okay? And it's beaming for billions of years and then all of a sudden it's gone. But all of that stream of material, that, that, the, the, those, that light that came from it is still on that path. It's still coming at you and you're receiving all that information. And then at one point it's going to be gone, but it was gone a long time before that. Dude, that is amazing. I love it. It's like the dancing fountains at the, at the, uh, I love those. It's I, like the, it, yeah. I love those. It's, a, it's where they, it's not just, well, it's not just there. You go to many theme parks have this. Right. The dancing play, fountains. Yeah. The children playing it. So yes, these are you, fountains that are at an angle. Right. And they'll put a spigot of uh, a stream of water that comes up. Right. The fountain turns off and you see and you the, see stream, the of water. stream of water going. So it's just like that, but with light it's coming just from like a that. star. Dude, that's fantastic. That is amazing. And, in fact, in fact, since you took me there. <laughs> okay. 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 If Earth were a black hole, a beam of light would do exactly what those streams of water are doing around the black hole. Because the curvature of space-time is that strong. You would uh, turn on a beam of light, you see the beam go up and down. Right, 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 yes. Oh, that's amazing, I love it. That is, oh, that's so, God, the universe is so beautiful in so it, many ways. It, it's beautiful, it, it, beautiful, beautiful. So, <laughs> So that's the sun, it's refraction, it's the fake sunrises and sunsets, 12 hour day and night. Yeah. And uh, kind of reminds me of that poem recited at the end of the Moody Blues song, Nights in White Satin. Do, do you know that right. poem? 
No, I don't. I know the, I know the song. I oh, so you, you cut off the song before the, the most beautiful part of the song came out, which is a, a spoken poem at the end. Well, I was I was listening for the song. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's the song you want. It's, it's the, the song I wanted to hear. <laughs> the, the song. Okay, but at the end, there's actually a recitation. It begins, breathe deep the gathering gloom. Watch lights fade from every room. That's how it begins. But what I'm thinking of is the last line in it, which is, in the theme of this whole explainer video. But we decide which is right and which is an illusion. Nice. Ooh. Oh, I like it. What a perfect yeah. ending to what we've been talking about. The sun, you're a liar. <laughs> you're a liar, son. <laughs> that, Chuck, that will not make it into poetry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to drop it there. Chuck, always good to have you. Always a pleasure, babe. All right, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. Once again, bidding you to keep looking up.